Hello everyone, Simicraft here, and welcome to another video. Today we are taking a look at The Orphaned Soul, which is, from my understanding, a visual novel of some nature, and also, for full disclosure purposes, I should state that I did indeed receive a key for this game. But, uh, you know, with all the explanation stuff out of the way, we've got a video here, so I can actually just show you what the game is about instead of telling you about it. So, uh, let's go, let's, let's begin the story. Your birth name. Ooh, yikes. Uh, now, I am aware, I believe the uh, protagonist of this is female, so we'll stick with our normal, like, craft uh, naming scheme, but we'll be, uh. We'll be craft. Where is the T? There we go. We'll be craft Della. Craft Della. There we go. Terrible name, never name your daughter this, but I think it'll suffice for this. My earliest memories are of loss and pain. My natural parents exist only as shadows, forgotten specters of a past I have long mourned. They were wandering deeply, and a child was not something they planned on or wanted. I was left under an oak tree long morning, discarded. I remember the sting of rain hitting my face, blending with the tears of a child who had never known love or acceptance. But then fate intervened. A couple who had desired a baby but never had the good fortune to sire one of their own found me under that tree. He could scarcely believe that someone would leave this lovely child in the woods like so much rubbish. They took me into their humble home and their heart. I became their blood and I blossomed into their care and love. They paid for schooling with their meager funds and made sure I knew the acceptance most children take for granted. On the eve of my 21st birthday, I knew it was time to leave my beloved home and forge my own path in life. My goal was a simple one, to find my birth parents and find out why they abandoned me. My mother and father did not object, but I could see the pain in their faces as I spoke of my mission. But it was something that I had to do, and they understood. I knew that there would be an empty space in my soul as long as these questions went unanswered. I explained it was no fault of theirs, as I had done nothing but love and nurture me all these years, and my heart would always belong to them. But this yearning in my very being would never be quenched without finding out what happened. The time had come to begin the most difficult journey of my life. Alright, let us begin it indeed. Alright, and unfortunately the voice acting ends there, it would seem. Mother, father, I am packed and ready to go. My darling Graftella. I have long dreaded this day, but we knew it would come. All our hopes and prayers go with you. I knew it would be a hardest or which. Okay, I think this is a uh, internal monologue. I knew it would be hardest for Dad. Indeed, he could hardly meet my gaze. I, what your mother said, child, the same. My heart broke as I stared into the eyes of my beloved family, brimming with unshed tears. I shall miss you, dear ones. We will see each other again, do not worry. So this is Craftella here. Uh, interesting art style, certainly distinctive. The background, this background actually looks really nice, I will say. Not quite as old on the characters, but, uh, hey. Um, Anyways, the road leading out of my village was a familiar one. The stretches of tall trees and the songs of birds echoing through the air. I eventually came to a crossroads, one that had been spoken about in whispers throughout my childhood. Further down these paths was cursed ground, deemed forbidden to all villagers. Various tales of danger and treachery were spoken of, but I was never sure if I believed them or not. They seemed like tales designed to keep curious children from wandering. There were two paths to consider, one going east and one going west. 
Neither appeared any different than the other. It was time to choose a road and follow it. Interesting. So this is so far reminding me a bit of the Forest of Doom, that sort of uh, school of interactive fiction development. I presume this heart here is probably our life of some kind, like health or something. And we're presented here with a choice that is just a blind east or west. Um, we really don't have any reason to pick one over the other. We can go west? Yeah, let's go west, why not? I decide to head west down the path. As the trail deepens, I slowly become aware of a buzzing sound. By the gods, a huge swarm of bees overtakes me. I run away in the other direction as quickly as I can, but still get stung a few times. Lose three life points. I eventually make it back to the trail and take the east path, hoping for better luck this time. Well, that went well. The going is thick and rough this way. Twisted, twisted tangles of trees make it so dark I can hardly see a damn thing. I eventually come to a small clearing, and ahead I hear a loud rushing and rustling and snorting. I'm not sure what it is, but it might be a threat. Huh. Uh, I'm not getting the impression that Craftella is an amazing fighter. So... I mean, I don't have the impression she's terrible necessarily, but I don't have the impression she's particularly trained in it. Uh, I'll just hide in the brush. I look around and see some foliage and dive into it, holding my breath. Emerging from the jungle is a huge boar, and he looks hungry, as they often do. He passes me by eventually. Whew, time to dust off and keep going. I swear, this jungle seems to go on forever. Finally, I make it to a clearing where there is a small brook. The water looks so clear and blue. The cursed swamp is making me thirsty. Maybe we could take a drink here. Ah. Uh, I mean, it's not as if there's going to be much better water sources that we'll just happen across. Well, we'll take a sip. Why not? I slowly take a sip of the water. It tastes amazing. I can swear it's the most refreshing water I've ever had. Gain two life points. Feeling invigorated, I set off through the woods. After traveling a while longer, the jungle finally gives way to a clearing, where I can see hills ahead and glorious blue sky. I never thought I'd be so happy to see the sky again. I look around, and ahead a little ways, I see a young girl sitting on the ground, her face wrinkled with worry and distress. She sees me and walks over, smiling a little. Greetings, milady. My name is Athena, or Al Altena, Alten and it seems I've gotten myself quite l lost this time. Mother warned me about wandering too far, but I did not listen. And greetings to you, dear. I'm sorry you're lost. I'm a visitor to these parts. Where am I exactly? Why, well, you're in the Shanti Hills. Our town is, well, somewhere around here. Not too far. Oh, north, I think. Yes, head north, and you should see it quickly enough. Thanks very much for the directions, lady. I shall head north, as you say, and find this town. I've been traveling all day, and I'm quite tired. Farewell. I wave goodbye to the friendly young girl, and head north as she directed me. A town and some friendly faces sounds lovely about now. I walk... I walk north quite a ways, and the train starts to get really rough and rocky, and the foliage disappears. Hmm, maybe that girl was really lost, because it doesn't seem to be a city this way. I suddenly hear a crunching sound and stop. From behind a stone peak, a man dressed in thick robes and a black hood jumps out. He sneers and comes towards me. Tell me your story, hoping he will spare you. Lions say you're a scout with an army behind you. Well, if you're a scout, one potential thing to do is just kill the scouts. That way the army doesn't know about you. So, uh, we won't say we're a scout. We'll just tell him the story, hoping he will spare you. Hold thief, I possess no money, and I'm on a desperate mission to find my true ancestry after being orphaned as an infant. Please let me be. 
Let's see, girl. Really think that will pluck my heart strings and stay my greedy hands? Fascinating. Perhaps this has been your lucky day, young one. My parents are mostly scum, but at least I knew them. Go on your way. Whew! Imagine that, a bandit with a heart of gold. A true rarity. He walks off and disappears into the desert. Time to turn back to the spot where you met that girl, as I believe this was a setup from the start. Time to go turn back to the spot where you met that girl, as I believe this was a setup from the start. Okay, kind of uh, phasing between first and second person uh, dialogue there. Or not dialogue, but writing. I arrive back at the clearing and retrace my steps. Altena is nowhere to be found. Perhaps it's paranoia, but I feel like she was sent to stop me on my mission. Or maybe just a robbery? But how could anyone know of my quest? Yeah, probably just a robbery. As I look around, I see a path leading east that I don't remember seeing previously. Very strange indeed. Time to continue, I suppose. The train gets rugged and rocky as I travel along, and the sun is really hot. I suddenly hear the loud cry of a bird of some sort, and a huge black raven begins to circle around me as I walk. The raven almost seems to stare at me, daring me to keep going. This is indeed no random wandering bird, but an omen of some sort. A chill runs down my spine, but I've come too far to stop now. After a few minutes, the raven glides off into the distance and I continue onward. Another few hours of walking and the landscape changes again, becoming filled with grass and trees. It steepens a bit as well, and the going becomes a little slower. Finally, ahead I see a mountain with a huge castle sitting atop it. Oh yeah, what do you know? I stop in my tracks as I hear someone moaning just off the trail. I follow the sound and discover a wounded man kneeling on the ground. He is covered in scratches and blood and seems barely able to go on. What should I do? Help the wounded man avoid the man fearing a trap of some kind. Okay, so he has scratches. And blood. Okay, so he is covered in scratches. Now that would be a risky play in this day and age, because those wounds could be in could become infected quite easily, and then that could actually legitimately kill you in this day and age. So, therefore, I doubt it's a trap. We'll help him. Good sir, uh, how can I help you? What happened? E yeah. Uh, I was ambushed by a group of men. They were looking for someone. It goes by the name Kravdella. Uh, oh no! How can this be? Who could possibly know of my journey? I have not encountered this person, sir. The man falls to the ground, coughing hard, then is still. He has sadly passed on. It's my fault. You head east as it's the only direction and that is clear. The going gets rougher as I travel east. The trees fill in once again until a few hours in when I can see to the north that the ground flattens out. As I r turn a bit more northwards, I see a small tunnel ahead where I can fit through, or else I can walk through very thick wilderness. The tunnel is fairly dark and I can't see too much, but it could save me a lot of time and trouble pushing through all those damn prickly branches. The choice is mine. How long is this tunnel? Because if it's more than like, I don't know, like a couple dozen yards, then that's going to become pitch black. You could, you could easily die in a place like that. At least the woods you can uh, see what's happening. So we'll go through the woods. I sigh and ready myself for slogging through these tangled branches. No matter the cost to your flesh, the going is hard and slow, and I end up with scratches after a few hours' walk. Lose one life point. The terrain grows slowly more desolate and swampy as I continue onward through the afternoon. Suddenly, as I step off a mossy bank, my feet start to sink quickly into the ground. Quicksand. 
I look around for a way out. I see a branch hanging above me. I could grab and pull myself up, but it would be a tough reach. Or I could just reach for the bank in front of me and try to escape that way. I must make a decision quickly. Okay, so here's the deal. The branch could be tough to reach and could break. But if we can get a hold on that branch and it doesn't break, then we have a legitimate hold on something. The bank, though? I mean, it's not going to go breaking on us, but somehow I doubt you'd be able to get as good a grip on the bank as you could on the branch. So we're going for the branch. I reach up towards the hanging branch and manage to snare it with my hand, slowly pulling myself out of the muck. Whew, I was quite fortunate to escape. I continue onward through the gloom. As I walk along, the terrain grows more swampy and gloomy. The very trees seem like they are crowding in on me. I stop and look around, having the odd feeling something is watching me. A deep and sad voice echoes in my head suddenly. Greetings, Greetings to you, Craftella. You seem quite troubled. How might we help? Oh dear, where's that coming from? I spin around trying to see who is speaking, and how do they know my name? Ah, they don't seem too hostile. We'll talk. I speak out loud. Who are you? Where are you? This is both terrifying and exhilarating at the same time. I can barely get the words out. Um, hello? Yes, this journey has tested my fortitude for certain. How could you know about my feelings and such? I always thought trees were just trees. The reply sounded a little di in indignant. Just trees indeed. No, dear girl. We are living beings much like yourself. Every heartbeat echoes through us. Every breath rustles our leaves. We just wanted to assure you that you are safe here and wish you luck on your journey. Thank you, good sirs. I appreciate your good wishes. The voice in your head is now silent. What a strange place. My friends would never believe what I just experienced. Onwards I go. A very safe and warm feeling in my heart for some reason. The train slowly gains more traces of civilization as I progress over the next few hours. Tiny little huts dot the landscape, and eventually you see a bridge ahead of you, with a number of people marching in a line. They appear like refugees of some sort. How shall I proceed? Talk to the refugees. Hide in the brush. I mean, could refugees help us much? Probably not. We'll just hide. Apparently people are looking to kill us, so we probably don't want to reveal ourselves to tons of people. I kneel in the brush, fearing too many questions about my mission. A shame indeed, as these people seem to be so sad, and I'm curious about why they're out here. I wait for them to pass and continue onward. I look for a few hours and eventually see a rickety old watchtower looming before me. It appears as if it hasn't been occupied for quite some time. Maybe there's something useful there. On the other hand, it looks old and may be dangerous. Oh, we actually might be able to- I, I think uh, there could be stuff to get. We could uh, get a view of the surrounding area. Who knows, maybe there's equipment up there. I slowly climb the rather unstable ladder to the top and make it. The vista that greets me is breathtaking as this mysterious realm stretches before me. Further north, you can see the steep path up to a mountain city. That is my current destination. I search the tower and find a strange old book bound in cracking leather. The writing isn't in a language I recognize. I keep it just in case it proves useful later. Nothing else is here, and I slowly climb down and continue northwards. I walk a bit further, and the path turns upwards as it begins winding towards the city. I finally arrive at a large natural rock formation with a huge opening. This must be the gateway to the city path. My blood runs cold as I hear an angry growling sound to my right. I freeze and look around. Another beast I have run afoul of? The crevices are too dark to see anything. What should I do? A 
On one hand, the shadows might not be the best place to go, the beast could be lurking there. And uh, we have only adopted the dark. The beast could potentially was born there. But running towards the opening may not be the best course of action either. I'm not sure how fast Griff does compared to whatever beast may be lurking in the shadows. And sudden movements are a great way to get a lot of attention towards you. So we will hide in the shadows and see what transpires. I try to duck into the shadows of the cavern, but from out of the darkness comes a huge brown bear who smells me easily and swipes his paws at me. I stumble up to my feet, but the bear is hungry for blood. The bear's paw catches me on the side of my head hard. Lose seven life points. I manage to get to my feet and charge towards the opening. My lungs on fire. The bear chases me, but quickly loses interest. Thank the gods. I stop a mile or so. After I stop after a mile or so, catching my breath, resting a bit, I continue towards the city, which is now in sight. <laughs> After walking for a while, I see a city looming ahead of me. This must be the mountain city I saw a few days ago. Perhaps the answers I seek are contained within this place. I must make haste, as the city gates are just ahead. Two huge iron gates tower over me as I walk toward the city. In front of these gates is a huge guard, dressed in thick armor and carrying a huge broadsword. How can I get inside? Tell the guard the truth about your quest. Try to find another way into the city. Who knows? I mean, he's a local. He might even be able to point us to people that might help us. I don't see what reason to avoid him. Oh, strangers simply cannot simply wander into the city. What business do you have in the hollow grounds? Toss this young one. I'm on a journey to find my true lineage after being abandoned as an infant. I just look inside the city for clues as to my parents' true identity. Please allow me passage so that I may fill the hole in my heart. Bah! Sad stories about abound in this land, girl. I have put neither coin in my pouch nor provide cause for violating our laws. Be gone. Curse the soulless, the soulless barbarians. It appears I will need to find another way into the city. I walk around the entrance a bit and see a fairly steep wall. It appears to have lots of nooks and ledges in it, so it could be climbed over. It would be very hard, though. I stop and see a good horse-drawn merchant wagon loaded with goods headed for the city gates as well. I could run and jump in into the wagon, hiding myself to get inside, or I could try climbing this wall and get into the city that way. Both are quite risky indeed. I must decide. Okay, um... Hmm... First of all, hiding in the wagon isn't going to necessarily be much easier than climbing the wall, right? It's currently moving, so we need to catch up to it and jump in it while it's moving without somehow getting noticed by the merchants. Tough. The other thing to note is, considering uh, how tight the security of the city appears to be with regards to letting people in, there's almost certainly going to be some sort of... Uh, kind of check of the goods being brought into the city, right? And then you get revealed that way. So I think the only option here really is to climb the wall. I plant my foot on a jutting brick in the wall and begin its hard, sweaty work to and begin. It's hard, sweaty work to climb the berry, and by the time I manage to get over it and drop to the ground on the other side, I'm covered in little scratches. Lose two life points. I stop and stare at the majestic city square. You've never seen such grandeur and architecture in your life. The town bustles with people of various professions, their expressions hurried and gazes fixed downward. This place is so crowded and confusing. There are three directions to choose from. Each has a cluster of similar looking buildings, so there's no way to differentiate one from the other. I have to make a choice. Let's take the North Street. I head down the north path into the city center. The amount of people coming and going chokes the cobblestone path and makes traveling very slow. Finally, the crowd thins a bit as I arrive into some sort of main square. 
Sitting on the sidewalk, leaning against the building, is a man with a very sad expression on his face. His clothes look as if he were once well off, but now very worn, a shadow of their former luxury. He seems to be begging for some kind of book. Offer the man the book I have found. Yeah, sure. Greetings, sir. I heard you mentioned some kind of book. I found one in the woods south of here. Is this what you're looking for? <laughs> the book! I thought I should never lay eyes on it again. My name is Giannis, and I was once a trusted member of the city council. Alas, the gods conspired to take away my station and dignity. But this book was the last vestige of my former position. Thank you, kind child. You're quite welcome, sir. I'm sorry for your turn and fate. I hope this book brings you some joy. For your generosity, I offer this royal pass. With it, you can gain an audience with the king, if you desire. Thank you once again, traveler, and good fortune on your journey. I feel sorry for this poor soul, but also feel glad that the book I found had some use. Perhaps this royal pass will be even more useful later on. I continue up the streets. I walk down the west path into the city. The people thin out quite a bit as I head this direction. Eventually I come to a shop with a worn wooden side in the front. Fortunes, herbs, and potions. The interior glows slightly, but is otherwise rather dark, and I can't make out much inside. Herbs and potions, that sounds like it could help us get some life back, and I would not be opposed to that. It could be a rescue, but hey, why not? I step into the darkened shop, and a haze of smoke stings my eyes. Once my eyes clear, I see rows of books and shelves stuffed with scrolls. And this place seems very old, as if it's been here longer than the city itself. As I stand, staring at the shop's vast array of contents, a small... A small boned woman steps out from behind a curtain. She is dressed in a simple orange gown, with eyes that gleam with wisdom and knowledge. Relax, Wanderer. You have been expected. May you be welcome in my shop. Uh, pardon me, lady, but expected? How do you know about my journey? I've never met you. I know that you are seeking information about yourself. Your mother and I, we have been acquaintances through the years. She loves you more than anything and is most concerned about your quest. My mother? I begin to wonder who the person you knew as your mother really is. I see, lady. Do you have information about who my birth parents are? Who I really am? The answer will shock you. But your real father, I suspect, he is the king of this very city. I'm afraid a rather indelicate affair occurred after a violent fight with the queen, and you were the product of this secret union. Your mother was very scared, was a very scared servant girl who fled the city after the incident. By the gods! No wonder my adopted parents never wished to speak about the past, and my natural parents wanted little to do with me. So th thank you for telling me all of this. It is truly hard to believe, but it answers many questions my heart has wrestled with all my life. You are quite welcome, child. I assume you wish to confront your father? I imagine so. The palace is north of here, if you wish to do so. Good fortune to you, my dear, and may your journey be a fruitful one. Thank you once again, wise one. <laughs> Goodbye. My heart is beating through my chest. I must confront the king and let him know the pain he has caused with his careless infidelity. Regardless of the consequences, I carry on northwards through the city. 
Walk for a while through various twisty lanes of homes and eventually come to a dirty marketplace, brightly lit with a blood red color. I'm sure this place has many shady dealers doing all manner for legal deeds within these walls. As I walk along the street, a swarthy merchant calls out to me. Essential living items sold here in exchange for coin, the man shouts in a loud monotone voice. Dear lady, I have this ring of water breathing for sale. Travel through any water. Have coins. Um, I don't see why we would need that. We'll just keep walking. I do not wish to deal with these nasty-seeming folks in this market. Getting deceived or hurt is a strong possibility. The sorts I've run into on this journey boggle the mind. I continue northwards down the streets. I walk further north into the city and eventually I come to a large square with a building to my right and a tall structure further to the north. The sign in front of the building says, Fox and Wolf Tavern. Where should I go? I say we can continue northwards. I, I mean, I think we've got everything we need. We've got a pass to meet with the king. We've got, we suspect that he's our father. Let's go. We'll avoid it. All I need is some drunkard starting a fight or other nonsense. I have an urgent mission to finish up. I continue onward down the streets. As I travel further north, I finally come to the heart of the city. A huge castle. It towers into the sky hundreds of feet like a giant's gnarled hand, tearing into the clouds and dwarfing the surrounding buildings. I look around for ways to access this castle. After scouting around a bit, I seem to have three ways to enter. The front gate, where two guards stand on either side in ornate armor and ready lances. A west side bridge, where a deep moat surrounds the castle, and an east slope that descends downwards towards the structure. The castle gates, we'll just walk in the front door, no problem. You got a pass? I slowly approach the huge gates of the castle, my steps echoing in the misty air. The two guards turn to face me as I get near their lances crossing together. One announces in a sharp voice, Halt, stranger! State your purpose! Show the guard your royal pass. I pull out the royal pass that the man in the square gave me and present it to them. They take the pass and quickly step aside, gesturing for me to pass. I'm inside the castle. Off I go to visit the king. I step into the castle's main entrance, and am faced with a decidedly dark, somber interior. The walls are made of polished marble, and torches adorn the court, casting eerie, flickering shadows all over the room. What a dreary place. I see three doors in this hallway, one to the north, one to the east, and one to the west. Each is identical in design and decoration. Standard tall wooden doors. Time to choose. I'm no expert in castle design. The castle was to the north, right? I feel like the throne room would kind of be a straightforward place to get to, right? I'm surprised we weren't escorted there. We'll go north. I proceed north through the north door and enter a large, musty stone passageway. I get the feeling this hall has not been used in a very long time. As I walk, I suddenly hear a rustling of some sort ahead. What now? I will hide behind a pillar and wait. It didn't work well with the bear, but hey. I duck behind a wall, pillar, and out of the darkness, a horde of thirsty vampire bats fills the hallway. Their cries almost deafening you. By the gods, I wait a while until the bats settle in, back into their perches in the ceiling and continue onward. I enter a huge ornate throne room, decorated with elaborate curtains and pops of gold and gems, the seat of all power in the realm. These halls drip with power and influence. I stand facing the throne, upon which sits the king, staring at me with knowing eyes. Greetings to you, milady. I knew this day would come, and now you are here. My eternal shame. Yes, I know who you are. I am King Garam, ruler of the realm, and indeed, your father. I suspect you have many questions to ask me. Just one, actually, Your Majesty. Why? 
The answers are many. It all boils down to one simple truth. I was truly embarrassed at my indiscretion and sought to avoid any loss of respect or station due to my actions. It is a path followed that I have regretted all of the years since. I believe I understand, but I cannot condone your actions. If it were not for my parents, I would have been lost. I would have never been anything at all. I understand your anger, young one. It is totally justified. Would you believe I have followed your progress from afar all these years? Would you believe I cared enough to keep the to weep with bitterness and heartbreak over your struggle? If that was the case, why make me come here like this? Why make me suffer and bleed for your acceptance and love that I should have had from the start of my life? The fault is once again mine, Craftella. I allowed fear and ego to best my desire to do the right thing and reach out to you. But I can say with all sincerity, I am glad you made it here today, so I can apologize to you from the bottom of my heart. I understand. My heart already has two parents that can never be replaced, but thank you for your words. My soul is glad for this meeting today. As is my dear girl. Now, you should be off. Back to your home. I will sign a carriage and guard to escort you there. Good luck to you, Graftella. I wish you happiness and joy all the days of your life. The carriage ride back home takes several days and lets me off back at my home village. I leap out of the transport, running towards my familiar grove. Mother, father, I'm home! My mother emerges from the house, her face alight with joy. My dearest Craftella, I'm so glad you made it home to us. We embrace tightly, no words being needed. I'm so glad I made it home to you. I spoke to my father. Do you know what was the king of a city far from here? I suspected, child. I never knew for sure. But there were rumors. I was waiting until I felt you were ready to learn the truth. My dad came out of the house, snow as well, his face in a big grin. I knew, I knew you'd return, my beloved. He grabbed me and picked me up in a big hug, as he always did. Dad, you know I hate that. I made your favorite meal for supper. Beef stew without the carrots. We clasped hands and walked into our home together. Our laughter ringing in the crisp morning. I had completed my quest. And my mind could be at peace. I was no longer an orphaned soul. Okay, wow, I guess this is uh, one of those first looks where we play the entire game. Okay, so, The Orphaned Soul. Thoughts. Um, hmm. So, it's four bucks on Steam, so it's not a, an expensive visual novel by any means. Uh, well, let's just start with some pros. I really like the backgrounds. The background work in this, I think, was really quite good. The characters, I was kind of neutral on. I'm not going to say they were bad. It, 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 I, don't know. I I didn't. I, I've seen better. Is, all, is what I'll say. Doesn't ruin it, but yeah, just not. I guess a big fan of the art style they went for with the characters. With the backgrounds, the backgrounds. I really like those backgrounds. They were very good. Uh, I don't know how replayable this game is. Uh, I'm not sure if it's. It seems quite likely that it's probably, for the most part, just a linear series of events where you can make some wrong choices and lose life and stuff. Uh, obviously, we've kind of passed by a lot of things in the town, and I would be curious to kind of go back through and see what exactly would have happened if we had made some different choices that are actually gone into the inn and the like. And who knows, maybe there are, like, legitimately actual different endings and stuff. My 
and yeah, and from the writing perspective, serviceable, I guess. Uh, I did notice. Now, I'm, I'm not usually the type to be super oh, hyper aware of, like, grammatical, well, not, of kind of writing quality, I guess. Uh, but I did notice one particular thing in this one, which is they kind of went back and forth between writing in first person and second person, where there would be things of, like, I did this, and then you did this. Uh, so... I don't think that's a stylistic decision, I think that's the thing, like, you, you're supposed to stick to one of those and kind of do it. Uh, again, minor annoyance didn't ruin the experience at all. Uh, although, I mean, I guess the big question is, uh, with this, but... Is it worth purchasing at this point, if you've watched this entire first look, and you've seen the story? Uh, and I guess that ultimately depends on a couple things. Number one how much you like this type of, this kind of approach to visual novels and uh, interactive narrative. You know, this is one of those ones where it's all about the choices, it's about uh, kind of examining these situations and trying to make the best decision to avoid, like, dying and stuff. And if you like that approach, then this is an example of that. And uh, it's not a terrible one, not a terrible example of that, by any means. But then also the replayability. I don't know if there are alternate endings, aside from just dying prematurely. I don't know if anything really changes much in the long run, depending on which choices you make. Uh, I mean, I'd certainly be curious to, at least on my own time, go back through and kind of see what some of the other stuff in the city in particular was about. And yeah. And ultimately, it's your decision whether or not you think the orphan soul is worth your time or worth your money. I doubt, unless I discover that there's actually a ton of replayability with this game where we can go on wildly different things, I doubt we'll be doing more of the orphaned soul on this channel. Um, I mean, it's possible, who knows, we could do a second playthrough technically. Not likely, though. But I have played a lot of other visual novels on this channel, so if you like this video, you may want to check out some of those videos. And until next time, guys, I've been Simcraft, and I'll catch you in the next video. Uh, whether more of the orphan soul, but more likely something else. Goodbye.